Is veganism just about the animals? Or is it part of a broader movement for peace and non-violence? Some in the vegan community have argued that veganism is an apolitical, single-issue movement for animals. They say we can't afford to split our time between causes and that taking a stance on other issues narrows our reach. For example, some criticised vegan solidarity with Black Lives Matter, like when they attacked this Animal Save post, or when some vegans started using the racist All Lives Matter hashtag in an attempt to draw attention to animals. In a rare moment of global solidarity against racism, not only did some of us fail to show support, some actually went out of their way to derail the call for racial justice. This clearly stems from our frustration at other movements. Despite the rise of intersectional thought helping to build bridges, other movements have remained largely ignorant of animal oppression, even though they face horrific and widespread violence. But this is exactly why we must build meaningful connections with others and help bring animals to the conversation. And we're not going to do that by targeting and insulting other movements. We need to approach them with understanding and patience. And supporting other legitimate causes isn't just good for animals. It's simply the right thing to do for anyone who believes in justice. Showing solidarity doesn't mean shifting our focus away from animals. It's about knowing what we stand for. Let's look back at a brief history of animal ethics to see where we came from and whether veganism has anything to do with human liberation. And disclaimer, we have a lot of white male examples. This of course reflects Western patriarchal privilege and we apologize to the many great minds who are often overlooked because of this. While this isn't a comprehensive list, we've done our best to include some of the most influential people in the animal justice movement. The first written reference to non-violence towards animals comes from around 3,000 years ago in ancient India when Ahimsa was being developed. Ahimsa is an ancient philosophy of non-violence which applies to all living creatures, humans included. It's central to Hinduism, Buddhism and most extensively Jainism. It's repeated throughout Jain literature. Do not injure, abuse, oppress, enslave, insult, torment, torture or kill any creature or living being, teaching that all life is intertwined and interdependent. This vision includes plants and we're taught not to take any more than necessary for our survival. It recognizes the impossibility of avoiding all harm and the focus is on the intention to inflict as little violence as possible. Ring any bells? Animals had many allies in the ancient world, including the Buddha, Pythagoras, and more recently in Syria, poet al-Ma'ari, who wrote the first recorded vegan poem a thousand years ago. Blind from the age of four, al-Ma'ari was a pacifist who advocated strongly for social justice. He was an outspoken atheist who denounced material wealth, even refusing to sell his own works. With Western industrialization and scientific inventions, animal exploitation grew exponentially, giving rise to a new wave of animal advocacy in the Western world. In contrast to how people see us today, flesh-free diets were denounced in the time of British Empire building as markers of anti-imperial and countercultural allegiance. The modern animal justice movement developed alongside and was influenced by the anti-slavery movement. Slavery was often justified on the basis that slaves were more like animals than white humans, which rested on the idea that it was okay to oppress animals. In one court case where the captain threw 133 slaves overboard, the argument was made in court that it was the same as if horses had been thrown overboard. In another example, a member of parliament defended slavery by saying that it wasn't very nice, but that neither was butchering animals. Many anti-slavery activists questioned this unspoken human supremacy over animals. Instead, they extended their compassion from humans to animals and fought for liberating both. Anthony Benizet, who founded the first major anti-slavery organization, once responded to an invitation to eat chicken by saying, would you have me eat my neighbors? The slave abolitionist movement inspired animal justice activists to seek more radical goals and later Gary Francione would develop the abolitionist approach to animal rights. In contrast to abolition, the first SPCA was formed in the 1800s for the promotion and extension of the practice of humanity towards the inferior classes of animated beings. Given that they ultimately believed that killing animals for food was acceptable, it seems fitting that they had their first meeting at Old Slaughter's Coffee House. 
I guess it also makes sense that the Queen later became an SPCA patron, making it the RSPCA. One founding member, William Wilberforce, was a famous anti-slavery politician. However, he was criticised for his incremental stance on abolition and terrible views towards women, workers and poor people. Wilberforce and his mates took active measures to erase the voices of female activists, believing that such involvement was unwomanly. It's clear that a warped view of justice infects all aspects of one's thinking. The strongest animal advocates have always been those with the most consistent values. For example, Lewis Gompertz, who wrote one of the earliest books on animal rights, in which he also discussed the rights of women, prisoners and workers. He was the only vegan among the SPCA founders and was eventually forced to leave because the others saw him as too radical. Then there was Amos Bronson Alcott, a slave abolitionist and women's rights activist who formed a socialist vegan commune named Fruitlands. He believed in non-violence for humans and animals, which meant, for example, that members did not use wool or slave labour cotton. He inspired the creation of Alcott House, a socialist community and school created in the 1830s. Their journal had the first recorded use of the word vegetarian to mean a completely plant-based diet. Later on, they collaborated with the Salford Bible Christian Church to form the first vegetarian society. The Bible group saw vegetarianism as the abstinence of flesh, continuing to consume both eggs and dairy. Because they saw vegetarianism more as a spiritual practice than a claim to justice, their vision was incomplete and many animals were left out of this ethic. Unfortunately, as the Bible group took a greater role in the society, their definition of the word vegetarian became the recognised norm. In the 1890s, Henry Salt wrote on the relationship between socialism, humanitarianism and animal rights. He was a founding member of the Humanitarian League, a group designed to change attitudes towards crime and punishment, the conditions of labour, the killing of animals for food, fashion, sport or profit, and the use of natural resources. Leo Tolstoy was an anarchist and pacifist who was influential in his ideas on non-violent resistance, inspiring the likes of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. In possibly the first record of a vigil, he visited a slaughterhouse and wrote a moving account of his experience. Donald Watson coined the term vegan in 1944, though it wasn't defined until a few years later. He was a conscientious objector to World War II and strongly believed in the power of veganism to not only liberate animals, but also to create a future world free of violence and greed. The UK Vegan Society was formed, distinguishing themselves from other groups by saying, Whilst honouring the efforts of all who are striving to achieve the emancipation of man and of animals, results remain limited so long as the exploitation in food and clothing production is ignored. Watson said, if the vegan ideal of non-exploitation were generally adopted, it would be the greatest peaceful revolution ever known, in the better interests of men and animals alike. The secretary of the organisation, Faye Henderson, said that a vegan will not exploit either man or beast, but strive to live harmoniously from day to day. And Eva Batt, the chairperson for the society, said veganism is one thing and one thing only. A way of living which avoids exploitation, whether it be of our fellow man, the animal population, or the soil upon which we all rely for our very existence. The society's official definition changed 13 times, and today's definition is more focused on personal consumption habits and frames veganism as a matter of personal responsibility. Catherine Nemo was a vegan doctor who formed the first US vegan society. She said that veganism is a practical expression of the oneness of all life. Jay Dincher later formed the American Vegan Society and was the president for 40 years. Dincher was a strong believer in Ahimsa, which he described as dynamic harmlessness. The society published a magazine called Ahimsa and Dincher talked about our responsibility to ourselves and others as well as respect for the planet and the need for sustainable veganic agriculture. In the 1980s, Victoria Moran interviewed vegans around England and wrote, Compassion, the ultimate ethic. She said, veganism is much more than a diet. When children are brought up in an atmosphere in which reverence for all life is both taught and practiced, they often become its staunchest advocates. It's clear that the founders of our movement saw veganism as an emancipatory philosophy for all life on earth. 
Veganism is a living, growing concept, and today it represents a wide-ranging and diverse movement. The Journal of American History states, the 70s marked the start of an animal turn that infiltrated the humanities and social sciences and drew heavily on feminist and Marxist theories. Renowned civil rights activist Dick Gregory was one such influential figure of that time. He was a strong ally to all oppressed peoples and extended his views of nonviolence to animals. He wrote in his memoir, Under the leadership of Dr. King, I became convinced that nonviolence meant opposition to killing in any form. Animals and humans suffer and die alike. Violence causes the same pain, the same spilling of blood, the same stench of death, the same arrogant, cruel and brutal taking of life. In 1972, the radical black liberation group and commune MOVE was formed. They demonstrated against animal enslavement, industrial pollution, police brutality and more. Their radical views terrified the state and eventually police bombed their commune, murdering adults, children and animals. Though MOVE is often associated with the black power movement, less mentioned is their commitment to animal liberation. Many feminists have discussed the connections between oppressions. In the 70s, they linked meat-eating with male violence, patriarchal domination and its contribution to world hunger. Eco-feminists traced modern power structures to their colonial roots, showing us how Western thought has divided man from nature, using science to dominate all that is deemed inferior. Carol J. Adams wrote The Sexual Politics of Meat to explore the way our gender politics is related to our view of animals, linking masculinity with society's obsession with eating animal flesh. The anarchist total liberation movement of the 90s taught us about the role capitalism plays in oppressing animals and called for the alliance of animal earth and human liberation movements. Anti-racist and decolonial activists have shown us how colonial dominance hurts the land and all its inhabitants. In their book Afroism, Afin Silco describe how injustice to animals exists within a project of racialization, wherein the further you stray from the ideal white homo sapiens imagination, the easier it is to be labeled subhuman or animal. The list of radical animal advocates is endless, although not all of them call themselves vegan. However, they all ask of our movements to be in conversation with one another. Non-vegan leftists are either ignorant of or deliberately turn a blind eye to the history of animal advocacy from within progressive spaces. And unfortunately, some vegans have helped this erasure of our history. This slows down progress for animals as it pushes them even further away from conversations about justice and freedom. Veganism is a movement against the biggest power imbalance of our planet's history. Today's view of animals exists within an insidious web of oppressive systems. They necessitate one another and they all benefit the same small group of humans. Any vision of justice which doesn't include animals is inherently limited as it leaves out the majority of those who are suffering and will not lead to the changes society needs to truly transform. This is what makes veganism as a movement for nonviolence so powerful. It provides us with consistent values that apply to all living beings. This can help us to see even the most normalized forms of domination and violence, providing a strong foundation for a justice movement. We stand firmly against the exploitation of others and denounce discrimination on the basis of arbitrary biological differences. In other words, we fight against the roots of all oppression, a value system which is sorely needed in our world. It's understandable that some of our responses as a movement have been reactionary. The enduring suffering that animal advocates steer into has pushed many of us to breaking point. But the need to hold steadfast to our root values has never been so important. Animal oppression is on the rise and the numbers harmed by industrial externalities are growing. It's important for us to understand that humans and animals are fighting the same enemies and to build strong alliances to bring them down together. So is veganism a movement for animals or is it something more? Well, it's both. Our focus is justice for animals, but we've long seen our goals as inherently connected with other justice movements. We've grown out of the unwavering commitment to nonviolence with strong values as our guide. Compromising those values compromises our movement, our solutions, and our integrity.
It also creates distance from our closest allies. People who have experienced discrimination are much closer to sympathizing with animals than white supremacists. In the States, black Americans are going vegan faster than any other demographic. On the other hand, folks with discriminatory tendencies more strongly endorse animal exploitation. For some people, discrimination is a daily reality that they can't just ignore. Asking them to leave those issues at the animal rights door is asking them to erase parts of themselves, which is uncomfortable at best or simply impossible. We also miss out on their valuable experience dealing with oppressive systems, experience which can help us to create a strong values-based movement that denounces sexism, ableism, racism, and all forms of discrimination. For those of us who are lucky enough to avoid dealing with human rights issues, we should strive to understand and learn from the marginalized members of our community. This lack of perspective has led to some issues within our movement, where discriminatory and abusive behavior gets overlooked, at times creating unsafe spaces for many of us. This is cited as one of the main reasons activists in our community experience burnout, a huge loss for us, and most importantly, for the animals. Ultimately, no one person or organization gets to dictate the bounds of the animal justice movement. Veganism is just one modern manifestation, carrying on an ancient tradition of caring for animals. And as we rally behind the term to represent our movement, it's important we consider the many great minds around the world who have contributed to this ethic and carried us to where we are today. Veganism could be the remedy our society is searching for, to help us widen our circle of compassion and guide us towards a more harmonious existence with the natural world. But it's not going to happen if we stray from our roots and perpetuate ethical blind spots that leave some individuals behind. So vegans and animal advocates, what kind of movement do we want? Nonviolence for all? Or should we let AV take the lead? The choice is ours. Good everyone, I'm Summer. Thank you for tuning in to our first ever video. Let us know your thoughts and criticisms. If you want to see more content like this, follow us on our socials, head on over to our website, all.org.nz. There you can learn a little bit more about our kaupapa and how you can support our work. For now, from Chris and I, thanks again and kia kaha. Oh, and just to save you asking, these boots are vegan. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>